You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Great friends, it is a Monday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. Happy to have everybody along. For those of you that are listening on 1090 on traditional radio, that's awesome. For those of you that are with us on YouTube and you're involved in our YouTube chat, the one thing I keep asking everybody to do is click the share button and put it in your group chats, um, your group texts, put it out on Twitter, um, tell people that we're rolling. And when you see Alex's tweets that come from Kaplan and crew, retweet them, comment on them. I mean, it just, it just lifts everything up. Um, the best thing to do is just go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com. That's where you get YouTubes and tweets and Instagram messages, cited debates, and every way to find the show. So wherever you are, radio, YouTube streaming, audio streaming, cable TV tonight, wherever we're finding you guys. I uh, hope you had a great weekend. And like I said, come visit the website because that's the easiest place to find everything. So listen, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I want to talk about the end of the weekend. Today's Monday afternoon. Monday evening, depending on when you're getting us. And Sunday night, I watched the Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul fight. First thing. Nice. You got it right. Yeah. I, I didn't say Jake Paul. I got Logan Paul. Nice. First thing I got to ask is, why was this on Sunday night? Like, aren't big mega fights usually Saturday nights? I wanted to ask you if you could ask your dad, and I totally forgot. Because your dad was the, the commissioner chief for this. I think I, I saw I him, by the way. No, I don't think so, man. I don't think he was there last night because I think he my dad had this hernia surgery. And no. so yeah, I don't think I think he had to I think he had to to bow out, you know. I was curious because it's it it was an exhibition, it wasn't an official fight. I was wondering if Florida made them move to Sunday because they probably had some official fights on Saturday where their commission needed to be on Saturday. Oh, That's man. the only thing I could think of. And I was going to have you ask your dad about that. Yeah. Like why would they have fought Sunday night? Cause I got to tell you guys, um, shout out to Bernard Thompson. Bernard Thompson said to me like on Friday, Hey, why don't you convince Bert to buy the fight at his place? And we'll all go to Bert Grossman's place on Sunday night. And I thought, uh, um, what are we well, talking about? Pretty far. Dude, I was down there this weekend, man. I was, I was all the way down, man. I told you guys, I was down way, way, way deep into what I thought was Chula Vista, but this little cluster is actually called San Diego. And it is the last, it's the last exit right before the border Palm. I thought that was Chula Vista. Apparently it's that portion is considered San Diego. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> um, I'd already been down there this weekend. So it was Sunday night, the fight. And I didn't know. I mean, I really didn't know. I, I mean, I knew the date, but I didn't know that it was on Sunday night. So now it's getting to about, I don't know, eight o'clock or so last night. And I'm seeing on Twitter that Chad Ochocinco, Chad Johnson, the former NFL wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, like I saw him get punched and knocked down. Did he win that oh, yeah. fight or did he lose that fight? It was the same thing as Mayweather Paul. There was no official judging of that fight, mm -hmm. but I watched all four rounds. Uh, when you get knocked down, you don't win a fight. He okay. he lost that fight. Okay, and who did he fight? <laughs> um, you didn't hear his post fight no. press conference. No. What's up now, world? Brian Maxwell's here. You hear my name now? I was like, bro, no. Like who's, you let Chad Brian? Johnson relax, the bro. Guy. Yeah. Who's yeah. Brian Maxwell? I exactly. don't know, but he fought Chad Johnson and he knocked him down. And then uh, Chad, though, round one, like most guys that have never fought before looked pretty good mm -hmm. like he came out pretty wild landed some punches and then you know 44 year old body kicked in and then he just ran out of steam mm -hmm. cardio kicked in and he got knocked down in the third or fourth round mm -hmm. um but yeah that was a weird one uh, chad's cool though because he just he's not trying to be a jake paul a logan paul he he they even did like a whole thing on him he's like i just have things on my on my bucket list that i want to do mm -hmm. fighting in a big fight event was one of them so I did it and now he's done fighting. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Well, I know I have that. I have that same goal is to have a big fighting event one day and Browner, mink, 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 you and me, Browner, mink, mink. Listen, man, them fat boy pushups I saw you doing, you might as well have been on your knees, ma'am. Jeez, them girl pushups you was doing. I'm surprised you survived. Let me tell you something. You, you couldn't do 20 pushups right now. Okay. All that soda and McDonald's that's in your body, forget about it. Okay, but hey, I'm still waiting for Browner to do that that lunge thing. Uh, oh yeah, the the lunge exercise that he said he could yeah. do, no problem. Still waiting. Yeah, but here's the thing. Um, I once I started to see it on Twitter, 
you know, hey, Chad Johnson got knocked down. The main event is coming, Mayweather, Paul. And I'm like, oh my God, I kind of forgot that it's happening tonight on Sunday night. So here's the thing. I wasn't going to pay for it. How much was the fight? How much, how much was 50 it? Bucks. 50 bucks? 50 bucks? Yeah. 50 smackers. Okay. I, I, I might've bought it had I known it was 50 bucks, but I, I just, the notion of paying for it didn't seem to work for me. I stopped giving Floyd Mayweather money a long time ago. Right. I'm not doing that. I don't care who he fights. Right. I am done doing Wise that. Move. Right. Right. Like, like Canelo Alvarez, just to give you an example. Canelo can have all my money. Right. Like when Canelo fights, <laughs> just, just, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but like when Canelo Alvarez fights, Canelo Alvarez makes like $50 million for a fight. Okay. The first like 35 million is from DAZN, the people that televise the fight. Everything after that, call it another 30 million. Canelo's taken like 90% of the alcohol sales, 90% of the gate, 90% of the merch. In other words, the guy who is the attraction makes most of the dollars. Did you guys know that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's never anytime you any fight anywhere, whoever you're seeing fight, they're getting paid two different things. And that's usually a sticking point on most like when mega fights happen, that's usually the reason why they don't happen. Who gets more? They can't agree to that. They can't agree to the ancillaries. Right. So so I will not buy a Floyd Mayweather fight if he were fighting the top contender in his prime. Because here's what I know about Floyd Mayweather fights. Floyd doesn't get hit. And Floyd rarely lands. He he he's he's just not he's not an exciting fighter at all. And and to see him in the ring with a guy who's much bigger, who he should absolutely at any moment annihilate with speed and experience and know-how and whatever. I thought Floyd Mayweather was going to take this guy, make him work for five, six rounds. Floyd's just kind of working up a little bit of a lather. He's having no problems at all. He's taking it easy. And then once you got the guy into deep waters where the guy's like, oh my God, I can barely breathe. That's when you just knock his block off. But I'll tell you something. I watched the fight. Now I didn't watch it well. I just want to be very clear to both of you gentlemen. How, did, Browner, did you watch this fight? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Alex, you watch this fight? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, it was on the iPad. I was watching Mexico US, really. Okay. Guys, I watched the fight on my phone last night like this. I had my phone in front of me. I was on an elliptical machine doing cardio. And Fat Tony was at his home and he had his phone like this and he was shooting the television. And I was watching it on FaceTime on my phone. Oh, geez. Because I refused to pay for it. And I know everybody's got these bootlegged sites that they can find it on. And I, I'll be honest, I clicked on a link. Nothing worked. You know, I gave also, up. Also, if you paid for the Showtime app, a lot of it didn't work. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. They're having issues yesterday. A lot of people mad. Oh, I didn't think it was Showtime. I think it was the fan bio, whatever. They, yeah, they had issues. But long story short is I wasn't going to pay for it. None of the bootlegged links that I people sent me worked, I'm being honest. And I just didn't want to put in the effort, you know? And, and so... I was like, you know what? Okay, so Fat Tony was shooting video of his TV, and I was watching his TV on my phone. That's Would how you I ask him to do phone. that for you? I didn't. He offered, and I was like, oh, really? He was like, yeah, I'll do that. I'm like, oh, Was okay. it on a stand, at least? Um, Kind. I think he had it, like, leaned up on something, because I kept wanting to say, would you mind zooming in Fat a little? Tony pay for this? <laughs> I don't know, I got to call out Fat Tony if he paid for this, man. Like, come on. No, I don't think Fat Tony paid for this. Because I saw an iPad also, and I think it was mm. streaming to the TV, so. I'll tell y'all this about this fight. Okay. I thought it was a complete waste of time. I hope Floyd Mayweather made, made every single penny. He called it a legal bank heist, which I'm pretty sure it was at the end of the day for him. Well, yeah, but, think about who he's taking money from. Right. He's thinking to himself, Floyd Mayweather's thinking to himself, nobody's paying for me. They're all right. paying to see him. So it's him and his dumbass viewers and his 20 right. million YouTube viewers and his brother's 20 million YouTube viewers. Those guys are paying me. I mean, the, I Paul, think, the Paul brothers are paying Floyd Mayweather. I think that was one of the things that I disliked the most about the fight before it started. But when the fight was over... I'll tell you this. Everybody got what they came to see. If you are a fan of Floyd Mayweather, you got to see Floyd Mayweather. If you a fan of one of the Paul brothers, you got to see the one who was watching foam at the mouth thinking his brother won. And you got to watch a guy 
literally live out a dream in fighting one of one of unarguably one of the greatest fighters of all time, in which he said that after the fight. You find out a lot about a guy once they fight someone. Mm. And when the fight was over, they asked him a couple questions. And his remarks, I had far more respect for him for what he said after the fight than yeah, anything he did during the fight. Because literally, me he just, too. I wanted to be a boxer. I got a chance to fight one of the greatest fighters of all time in a real fighting scenario. And I made it to the end. That's right. He did. And by the way, listen, let me well, tell you something. Well, okay. Well, go ahead, Alex. No, he made it to the end. Mm -hmm. And you said you were expecting Floyd to knock his block off. Yeah, I didn't. Well, there is an internet video rolling around where, where Floyd Mayweather did that. And Floyd Mayweather caught Logan Paul on his way down you know, because conspiracy theorists are saying, I don't believe Floyd this. dropped money on this going the eight. I don't believe it. So, 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 so my son, who who like Browner, I'm just trying to tell you what the internet is I, saying. Okay, I was saying, like Browner, my son is a hot take machine. He sent me the video. He's like, dude, he knocked him out cold. He was he was out cold on his feet. I watched the punch. I didn't think he was out cold on his feet at all. Okay, and I would say this: maybe Floyd Mayweather did have a a bet that it was. Oh, I bet you he did. It wouldn't surprise me one bit because that's the one thing you could control is that it goes the distance. Right. Meaning mm -hmm. I won't punch him too much. He won't punch me too much. We'll just dance around with each other. We'll make it to the distance. Don't you guys, let me ask you this. Were you not impressed with Logan Paul? No. No. Wait, hold no. on. Hold on. First of all, <laughs> no. hold on. Come on. He comes into the ring in very good shape, right? He looks good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great right, shape. So, so he's, Dude, he's yoked. So he's looking good. He's, he's looking the part, right? Yeah. Okay. He did answer the bell for every round. And go out there. I mean, dude, yeah. just was it like just, round three. I think he was going to puke. Yeah, it like he was <laughs> going to puke. Like right, round like, three. Like, like just dancing around. Forget about throwing punches or getting hit. Just dancing around for eight rounds. Pretty damn hard to do. Okay. Then he did attempt to fight, even though he had no mm -hmm. skill comparable to Floyd. True. And he definitely took some punches. Again, I mean, listen, if Floyd Mayweather punched me in a boxing match, you would think him as a boxer versus me as a non-boxer, I'm out for the count. No. Seemed like Logan no, Paul no, took some with, punches. Not with, not with 45 pounds difference. And not if you with bet one on of the softest to... punchers of all time. Look, man, the Floyd Floyd bet on himself that this fight would go the full distance. Because I will also remind you, he knocked Conor McGregor out, and he beat the hell out of that little kickboxer dude over in China because he was paid. He didn't he knock didn't, him out. No, he didn't. The ref, they just stopped it. Okay, well, either way. He was out of breath. The fight, <laughs> the fight the was truth. called. The fight was stopped. Right, right. This guy made it to the end, which is sure. Of an exhibition. Of an exhibition. Doing sure, haymakers. I will say that Scott's using the word impressive. And I will say, like, I'm not impressed, like, remotely at all by Logan Paul. But I definitely respect Logan Paul more than I did before the fight started. Who would you take, Logan Paul or Chad Ochocinco in a real fight? Logan Paul. Uh, yeah. Listen, Chad and would look it, terrible. To me, all I'm saying is he, it was impressive. The, the guy answered say, like, the bell for every I've round. Seen, I because I watched this stupid stuff. I have seen Logan Paul box a non-fighter before, and it is insane what having one professional in the ring makes a fight look like. Like, Logan Paul looked like a better boxer because he was in the ring with a professional boxer. When Logan Paul, at the end of the first round, started throwing haymakers like he was a cholo outside a nightclub, <laughs> like, that's the kind of stuff you get when two amateurs fight, which is what he did when he lost his previous fight to another YouTuber. When there's a professional fighter in there that knows what he's doing and knows not how to get hit, it makes Logan look better. I don't know if that makes sense, or, but it, it does. Of course it makes sense. Or, yeah. or Floyd did exactly what he did with Connor, and he carried him to the end of the fight. Perhaps. Yep. Perhaps. Uh, highly, listen, if you – I, like I, I, I had I, – I paid attention a little bit more than Scott, I think, to this fight. I wasn't on – Well, I was watching on my phone right. on Fat Tony's TV. I had on an I iPad. Had a, I had yeah. an iPad. And rounds two, three, and four, Mayweather tried. And he – he was messing Logan up. Yes. Like, I'll tell you that. So that's where I say I respect Logan for staying in there. But I'm not impressed by it because the guy had 45 pounds on Floyd. So what? Floyd, he's, not Floyd, even, he's not a pro Floyd, fighter. He's not a pro athlete of any kind. He's just a YouTube guy who got himself was a, in great he was, shape. He's an athlete. He was a what? college wrestler. 
Oh, I, I didn't know that. that. Nowadays, that's all you need to be called a, a professional athlete. It's some mm. sort of background. All I will, Again, all I will say about this young man is that when the fight was over, he gained more respect than I ever thought a person could for me because of what he said in a post-fight interview. Yeah. He's not his brother. Right. That's he literally sure. said, I hate being the jerk in so many words. I love you guys. So clearly there was a high level of respect involved. He is definitely not his brother. Well, his brother's uh, a tool. Well, let's let's yeah. take a look at some of the videos from last night. We'll, we'll, we'll let's for those of you that are listening, we'll walk you through it. For those of you <laughs> that are watching, you got to see this. Yeah, go ahead. Because I don't have any videos of this. Yeah. This event in person was the yeah. Firefest 2.0. Oh yeah, man. It rained. This event was a disaster. First of all, there was like nobody there. <laughs> yeah. Until the Mayweather fight, then it kind of maybe maybe 30, 40% of the stadium maybe filled up. They turned them lights but, down. But they they charged like they they missold people. They called a fight. I've seen a lot of videos of this already. They said a second row ticket, they would sell it for 750 bucks. Second row in the in the bleachers, oh, not man. on the floor. Wow. Oh, man. And then it was raining. So like if you had seats on the floor, you got rained on. Mm. And it, it was raining in the ring in the undercard. It was so windy that water was all over the ring. They had to stop one of the actual, they had two actual fights. They had to stop them because on the logos, they were slipping everywhere. Oh my God. It was Firefest, dude. Wow. And then those, those concerts of Migos and whoever else, like they yeah. were all lip syncing. It was terrible, dude. <laughs> it was so bad. The event, I, they, Showtime needs to do something. Cause I, their event was bad. Can man. I say something that's going to give me a lot of trouble with black people? Migos is so overrated. I'm sorry, man. I think I maybe I'm just from another generation of rap, or because, but I also don't think that's true either. Because Kendrick Lamar is their contemporary, and he's far better than all three of them put together. They're terrible. I don't like them. I never have. And, then, and last night just really proved it for me. I kind of like put the stamp on it. Like, what is this? Didn't they get booed at Coachella? I don't know. I I, I, know. I, I could believe it. I saw. I, I could have sworn they got time. booed off somewhere. I saw them one time. They were right. But I just kept thinking to myself, you know what these guys sat around? They sat around smoking doobies going, yo, dog, you know, we, we need a song about something. I don't know what it is, but we need a song about something right now. I don't know, man. And they're sitting there eating like some Panda Express, you know, and they're like, damn, man, this stir fry is rad, you know, or they probably said dope. And uh, and then they were like, well, why don't we do a song about stir fry? I mean, it's something we all like, you know, and they're like, I, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Stir fry. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, they got a song, and it's a hit. So I uh, hear where you're coming from, Browner. I understand. I got you. And All there's right, one hey, guy that's, like, useless. Oh, the one – yeah, there's three the, Migos. There's, yeah. There's, Quavo, there's the one – there's Quavo who's actually good. And that other one is just – I don't know what he's yeah. doing. There's one dude that has a baby with Cardi B. That's that's And then all the stuff. other guy who is just a friend that just is riding their tails, man, because well, that dude – does nothing it's kind of like uh, black eyed peas you know you got will i am mm -hmm. and you yeah. got fergie mm -hmm. and then there's yeah. oh, there's that third dude who you're like two more dudes yeah well yeah and apple be apple the app or something like that yeah <laughs> okay and then there's the fourth dude the fourth dude you're like i mean apple the app guy barely does anything wait What's there's the fourth a fourth guy? guy in a black eyed peas yeah yeah he's a real light-skinned brother too with long straight hair mm -hmm. wait th wait i know him who's the other guy apple the app yeah, I don't know, man. I'm sorry. I don't know none of them dudes. Taboo. 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 That's his name. That's Taboo. Taboo. Right there. Taboo. God, I don't yeah. know anything about that group. All, right, hold All on I know is Fergie shouldn't sing any more uh, national anthems. All right, wait. Let me have one minute here to talk about my friends from HES Solar, HES Solar. I'll put this up on the screen and we'll make it real simple for everybody. If you're watching on TV tonight, if you're listening on radio this afternoon, if you're with us on YouTube or whether you're listening to audio podcast, HES Solar can help you save a lot of money on your electric bills. And uh, believe me, here comes the summer and you may be running your air conditioning. You're going to get an electric bill, five, six, seven hundred dollars. And you'd be like, what the hell? Listen, my man, Spencer Holt can help you, whether it's your home or your business. Now, he's an expert in dealing in businesses, uh, lots of corporate headquarters or, you know, YMCA type facilities. He can help you. So just email him, Spencer at HESSolar.com. Spencer at HESSolar.com. Your home, your business. He can help you save a lot of money. And again, summer's right around the corner. You're going to be running that AC. You're going to see those SDG and E bills come and you're going to be pissed. HES Solar. Spencer at HESSolar.com. All right, Alex, um, 
I do yeah. want to see some of these videos. I do okay. want to see some of these videos from what happened with Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather. I also want to get back to some of what happened with the Padres versus the Mets, what will happen with the Padres and the Cubs. So I want to get to that. Uh, I do think all this Dodger potential cheating stuff is Not very – well, I mean, are we, are we waiting for like some investigation for Major League Baseball or are we working yeah, off accusations no. right now? I would say that Trevor Bauer pretty much admitted yesterday that he has been doing it. And Dave Roberts saying, I don't think it's cheating because they're not defining what a foreign substance is, is pretty much an admission of, of yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah so you, so. You've, we, we've made up our minds here. Okay. Very good. Uh, can we, are we just going to act like the Clippers didn't win? That's what we're going to do? No, I throw in some Clippers in here today. I okay. get to, I get to some Clippers. I thought the Clippers beating the Mavericks was actually somewhat amazing in that you're down 0-2 at home and you then tie down 20 it. in game three. Yeah, you down then you then you're down uh, then you come back and win two games on the road to come back and lose at home and be down three two and then ultimately finally win at home in game I seven. I thought I thought basketball season ended. When the Lakers did lost. Did that not happen? Did that yeah. not? I thought. Well, no, you. That's embarrassing for you to say. That's embarrassing on Tuesday. That's embarrassing, yeah. that's embarrassing for you to say. You know, you committed. You committed to the Nets. Wait, hold on, everybody. Stick around. Lots more to come. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Kaplan Accrued tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. We're here every day, 24-7. Giving you only the finest handcrafted sports talk programming you're going to find anywhere. And we never stop. Fanatic is such a mean word. We prefer committed. This is the Mightier 1090 AM. Adios, love handles. Adios, couch. Adios, quarantine 15. Say adios to the quarantine bod with pollo fit bowls made with fire grilled chicken and organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. The Olympic Games, where the eyes of the world will turn to Tokyo for the greatest show on earth. Catch all the action leading up to the Olympic Games on Countdown to Tokyo every Tuesday at 7 on Your View. You'll get the latest news on preparations for the games, details about the sports involved, and in-depth insights into teams, athletes, and the host city. Don't miss Countdown to Tokyo, Tuesdays at 7 on Your View. It's like the spirit of Greenwood is all over the place uh, in Tulsa, North Tulsa specifically. It's like it's not just one location anymore. This is the beginning. This is a launching pad. This is not uh, something that we just did to come together just for this moment. We have a term for typical cheese-filled, grease-covered, regret-inducing takeout. That's why dinner from El Pollo Loco is always fire-grilled, freshly prepared, feel-good food. The $20 Familia Dinner from El Pollo Loco. Time now for Kaplan and Crew tonight's Community Connect. Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive. Uh, another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently, about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog. Still finding a loving placement and purpose in life.
Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization. It's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. We don't ask a lot from you. Just 16 measly hours a day. That's it. Buy some earbuds. Listen at work. In meetings. On the way home. Talking to the wife. Or helping the kids with homework. They'll admire your stick to This is the Mightier 1090 AM. Adios, love handles. Adios, couch. Adios, quarantine 15. Say adios to the quarantine bod with Pollo Fit Bowls. Made with fire grilled chicken and organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. Cancer Center is the only comprehensive cancer center in San Diego, which has a NCI designation, which NCI stands for National Cancer Institute. And this is designated to only the highest possible ratings for cancer centers in the country. And that means that it's experts in every medical subspecialty pushing boundaries to, for difficult to treat cancers. We have a unique blend of cancer research and patient care, which really helps us take care of the whole patient from bench to bedside interventions with the latest research. And we're really pushing the boundaries to treat each individual cancer as much as possible. We're very proud of our leadership here in the community at UCSD. We have a term for typical cheese-filled, grease-covered, regret-inducing takeout. That's why dinner from El Pollo Loco is always fire-grilled, freshly prepared, feel-good food. The $20 Familia Dinner from El Pollo Loco. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. UC Irvine baseball may have been down this weekend at the Stanford Regional, but they certainly weren't out. They put up a fight to force a final tonight at Klein Field at the Sunken Diamond against Stanford. The Eaters dropped into the elimination bracket on Saturday after a loss to the Cardinal 12-4 in their second game of the weekend. In their first elimination game on Sunday, UCI matched up against North Dakota State and got it done. Final score in that one, 18-3. Then in game two on the day, the Eaters matched back up with the Cardinal. Stanford quickly got out to an early lead, but UCI wasn't having it. Down 4-2 in the eighth inning, UCI mounted a comeback, scoring six runs in the frame to get the win 8-4. Stanford and UC Irvine match up tonight at 7 p.m. with the winner advancing to a Super Regional. That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60-second timeout is presented by Your View. I've been a part of this community for a long time, and giving back is what we do. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about the San Diego Giving Back Raffle, a benefit for Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. Grand prize is this $4 million luxury home, or you could win a car, vacation, or cash. Everyone is guaranteed to win a prize. And you'll feel good knowing your raffle purchase goes to help families like the Lechugas. The next early bird deadline is June 18th. Catch all the action live on your view as the 1904 Football Club takes on the Chattanooga Football Club, June 12th at 5 p.m. 
We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Great friends, what is going down on a Monday afternoon? What is good along with Grande and the Brown Man? It's Kaplan and crew. And I would just say to everybody that's watching and listening, no matter what time of day, no matter what platform you're watching or listening on, make sure you visit our website, kaplanandcrew.com. That's where you get all of our Instas. It's where you get tweets, Facebook messages, YouTube videos. Um, we got to put out from last Friday, the Jim Lampley video, because that was an amazing interview with Jim last Friday. So uh, if you didn't check that out, we'll put it out there on YouTube for you. But again, that's where you get all of our cited questions and all of our sponsors. So come visit us on kaplanandcrew.com as we are back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios with Grande and the Brown Man. Okay, guys, we all admitted guilty pleasure that we all watched the fight last night. We all watched Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather. Guilty, guilty as charged. Okay. Uh, we've also admitted that nobody here seemed to have paid for it. Is that accurate? Correct. Fair assumption. Okay. I don't want to say who watched and how. I told you how I watched. A friend of mine, FT in the house, was doing this with his phone. He was holding his how? phone into his TV, into his TV, and I was watching on FaceTime from the other end. That's mm -hmm. that that that. By the way, that tells you a little something how they got somebody like me. Like, I don't want to pay for it, but I will do anything I have to, to see it. Including watching on a phone when somebody else is on their phone, shooting on a to their TV. Yeah. On a TV. Right. I wanted to see it. Um, but that's not really that big of a mark. Cause you didn't want to pay for it. Like if you want to pay for it and see it, then you would, I mean, you big Scott, you got the paper. All right. You a thirst trap now. You got that little fifty dollars. That ain't nothing. That's a, that's an afternoon at La Highness for you. That's a warm up. That's an appetizer. Yeah, it is. It's a and you got a Peloton. Can't you? Isn't can't you just write it off to ESPN too? Like, Easily. Hey, it was for work. Easily tax write off. Yeah. Tax write off. Yeah, I, I I think there was something in me, a principle somewhere that lives inside of me somewhere that said, do not give Floyd Mayweather your money. <laughs> he will disappoint yeah. you. Yes. You want to know why? Like. <laughs> This is, I'm going to play a clip of Floyd in the post fight press conference. This is why I have no like shame, no nothing ounce. And there's not a single ounce of me that has any regret for how I watched the fight. And this is, this video proves my point why. Wait. The patches on my trunk, that's 30 million alone. So who's really the smartest one in the sport of boxing? If you don't, if you guys don't want to see me do no exhibitions, don't come. Don't watch. When it comes to, legalized bank robbing, I'm the best. I don't care if y'all write good stories. I don't care if y'all write bad stories. At the end of the day, I will always have a last laugh. Then all the guys that y'all said was extraordinary, the Canelos and the Pacquiao's, I made them look ordinary. And then when I see it's a chance for me to do a heist, a quick, <laughs> a quick heist, at the end of the day, I'm the smart one. They say, oh, Floyd don't look good like he used to look. My bank account looking better and better each and every day. Yeah. All right. Listen, I, listen I just, but can I tell I, you something? Though? Hold on. I want to tell you something. That turns you off, doesn't it? No. Nope. Browner, it seems to turn Me? Browner off. Listen, I despise this guy. Okay, I would 100% despise this but guy. But come on. But, but as much as you might despise him, because that's an instant reaction. Isn't there something to be said for his candor and his honesty? Yes. Because, because look, you last week made a whole big deal about how people who are unqualified, who ask terrible questions, who've never been in a boxing ring before, have a judgmental tone in press conferences. Mm -hmm. And you said Naomi Osaka should walk away because none of these people even deserve to ask her a question. That's what you said. In so many words, yes. Okay. Now, think about who's interviewing Floyd Mayweather. Think about who the post-fight press conference is. 
You think those are a bunch of former pro boxers in there asking him questions? No, there are a bunch of people that are in a very judgmental way, likely asking him questions like with an attitude that sounds like this. Yo, man, you were like the greatest pound for pound fighter of all time. There are fights out there if you want to fight legit contenders. What are you making a spectacle of yourself here for? What, what is this, a circus now? And Floyd is on the receiving end of that from the journalist that's making 65 grand a year, okay? <laughs> All right, and, and Floyd's on the other end of that, on the receiving end going like this. Do you understand that I had $30 million because of sponsorship that was on my shorts? Do you understand that I have no chance of getting hurt by this guy? And so because he has 20 million YouTube subscribers and his brother has 20 million YouTube subscribers, all I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, look, people still like to come see Floyd Mayweather. Not really true. They actually just were hoping that Logan Paul might knock his, his block off or vice versa. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe Floyd would knock his block off. So the spectacle, the circus, the show, that's what Floyd Mayweather is producing now. He's not producing big mega fights. He's producing big mega shows. And, and I know that his commentary after the fight is a turnoff for hardcore boxing people, but it's a turn on for people like me that actually just kind of like honesty and candor. And by the way, if I were in his shoes and you told me as a retired boxer, I could put on an exhibition and make 50 million bucks. Pfft, you guys can ask me all the questions you want with all your tonality, but I'm going to tell you, I just stole a ton of money. Got look at me. Uh, nobody's even touched me. I'm not hurt. Yeah. I don't have a black actually, eye. He actually had another line later in that press conference where he said, "If you write a negative negative article about what I did today, go look at the house I'm going to, and go look at the house you're going to." That's like <laughs> Floyd Mayweather in a nutshell. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. There yeah. you go. Man, yeah. Well, listen. When I say I despise Floyd Mayweather, it is not the press conference that turns me off about him as a. I don't like him as a person. I don't like his off out of the ring behavior. I'm I don't like you. the way he treats women. Like there's a bunch of other stuff. The the trash talk. I love. I love the trash talk more than anybody else. I love what he's the the, the energy that he's giving people. I like because I love to see athletes talk crazy like that to reporters. I, 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 that's the only reason why I would listen to a press conference. But him as a person turns me off. So let me be clear about that. Floyd Mayweather as a person, I am not a fan of that kind of talk. I'm a huge fan of that. All right. All right. Let's take a look at some of these videos. Let, let's take a look at some. Let's give a little analysis. And uh, for those of you that are watching that were smart because you didn't buy it, and then you were uninterested, so you didn't have to watch it on your friend's TV through his iPhone to your iPhone FaceTiming, uh, and you also didn't want to bootleg it because you didn't feel good about that. Some people don't mind. Mm. What are we looking at here, Alex? Where do you want to start? You want to start with a little conspiracy theory? You want to start? Oh, let's start with this. Let's start with Logan Paul's best action of the fight. How about that? Okay. All right. Let's do it. Because this was hilarious. He just legitimately just went street fight on him at the end of the first round. He said, screw. <laughs> 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 and Mayweather literally just stood there and put his hands up and was like, you're not going to get in here. And I told right. my fiance, because she was laying next to me when we were watching this, she was not paying attention. And I was like, that right there? That will be on TikTok in 30 seconds. And people will be like, look at Logan going after Mayweather. Because like the dudes that watch Logan probably don't watch a lot of Mayweather. Mm -hmm. That's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. I could take that from Logan Paul. Right. So so Logan Paul, I don't know how tall he is, but next to him, he looks really big. But he, he's probably like 6'1", 6'2". And he's probably like 195, 205 pounds. Like he's, he's taller and he's bigger. And he it's looks... 190. And he looks built. I mean, he looks like he's in great shape, but he's not a fighter, not a boxer. So Mayweather just covered himself up and took everything that Logan Paul had, none of which was as good a punch as the Padre fan on the Rockies fan a couple weeks ago. Right. You know? That's the punch, that's the punch of the year so far. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So so Logan Paul unloads everything he's got in his bag at the end of the first round. And here is the conspiracy video going around of when Mayweather knocked out logan mm -hmm. paul but held him up mm -hmm. to make it to eight rounds mm -hmm. which i i don't see i i mean i just don't i mean he connects with them but they were hugging the whole fight i, I don't oh, understand no, he's out no man i don't buy it i don't buy it okay huh. punch he barely hits him then he comes with barely hits him again 
I mean, he and hits all, him, but he's not knocked out. He's punching all Logan him. Paul. All Logan Paul is not doing punching is, right there. All he's doing is holding on. Oh, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. We might have got this Zabruder film over here, baby. Play that one more time for a player. Really? Yeah. All right, here comes Floyd Mayweather. Hits him with a right, hits him with a left. Yeah, he's out. He no, out. dude, he's out, man. Dude, Floyd Mayweather's not holding him up. <laughs> Get out of here, out. dude. No, he's, look, Mayweather he's, can't even pick him up, man. He out. Dude, he's they out. did do a lot of holding. He did do a lot of holding the fight. He's out. Right? I didn't even. Wow. I didn't see him. No, I don't see him. Take a, when you listen, when you take a better look at that, he out. Floyd, out. Put the Floyd, put that money down, man. Got to make it good. Any shocker here that Browner and my son, two hot take machines, are on the exact same page? My son's no. been trying to sell me on this the whole time. He's out. Yeah. He's out. He's not out. I'm like, not he's out. not even close. Oh, I'm looking. I was looking at, at Rigby's uh, hot takes in the commercial break. Yeah. He added to this, the list because he's not out. He's not out. He's out. He's clearly, listen, he's clearly out. He's clearly he's not out. Floyd he's not, he's not clearly out. holding him up. He's no, not clearly not out. Clearly How out. can you say he's not clearly, clearly out? out? Oh, that's the wrong one. Here's this one. <laughs> Here it is one more time. I mean, Floyd barely touches him. Give me yeah, a break. Listen, oh, man, when you are fighting, okay, listen, when you're an experienced fighter, okay? Let me break something down for y'all, okay? When you're an experienced fighter, mm -hmm. you know your opponent is on their way out, okay? Floyd knew he could put this dude to sleep at this point, but I no. got to I gotta save this money again. Patches on, the, patches on the jeans, patches on the shorts, 30 million. If I hold him up, that's another 2 million. So we you know hold him up. Make sure he gets to the end so I get my money. You know what's funny about that is that you said the same thing that I believed, which is Floyd could knock him out whenever he wanted to. But I don't can. think he could have. I don't he think he, I, I, I don't think he could. We just saw the proof. Not no. a knockout. He could have had the ref stopped it with numerous blows, but 42 year old Floyd Mayweather isn't knocking out a 190 pound chiseled dude like that. It's he just did. not happening. He also had no interest in knocking the dude out. She just fair. He, if he had a bet to, on the fight. I got yes. it. Yeah, got he it. Floyd wanted to do what he did with Conor McGregor. I'm going to entertain the crowd because y'all came to see a show. Conor cannot hurt me. I thought they were posing for prom pictures with all the hugging. They could have been. It was a slow dance. It was not very entertaining. The point of the fight is for people to get their money's worth. If you are a fan of this mm -hmm. Paul character, you got your money's worth. You thought he could win, especially like you said at the end of the first round. He out there like, like he's trying to chop down a tree. I saw some tweets after the fight from two ESPN guys, Ariel Hawani, who covers MMA, and Daniel Cormier, who's a former UFC heavyweight champion. Yeah. Both of them said this was a bad look for Floyd Mayweather letting Logan Paul go eight rounds. I disagree. Like how he should have just annihilated him. I was like, have you guys been paying attention to what Floyd Mayweather does his entire career? He doesn't do right. that ever, no. ever. It, it, it's an expectation that that LeBron is going to win. There's no yeah. way LeBron's going to get knocked out. There's an expectation that Floyd Mayweather can at any moment knock this fool out. Okay. And the reality is, is that LeBron isn't going to win every game and he lost at home. And I'm, this is my own opinion. Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather did not because he could not. Floyd Mayweather, and I remember this knockout very vividly because he fought my boy from Oxnard who I went to high school with. His last knockout was 2011 against Victor Ortiz because Victor was trying to give him a kiss on the cheek again, saying sorry for headbutting I you. I remember that. And then Floyd turned around and smacked him in his face, and he knocked out. That was his last knockout. Floyd Mayweather does not knock anybody out. That's why I keep saying you guys can think he can knock Logan Paul out, but he cannot. That's, why I'm, saying, that's why I'm saying Logan Paul, to me, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. All right. Well, you're clearly impressed with no skill at all. So you're the ability to take it. a beating. I'm a, I'm a, yes. Yeah. Respect. Okay. Rocky. That? Not impressed. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. He was wearing the Rocky Balboa yellow trunks from Rocky three. Hmm. All right. Well, a lot of people thought he looked Are like you, Drago. Did you listen <laughs> to any of the broadcast, Scott? Not really. Cause I was on my right. phone listening. So no, not really. Can so I, was Mara Ronaldo. Uh -huh. who who does all their their fights yeah um and then they had Jesus and Mero who's that you familiar with them oh I love Jesus and Mero who Jesus and Mero like two dudes they he they, has no they idea. do like a clip show right they basically like they, they basically do a clip show slash podcast on Showtime mm -hmm. they, they started two they, dudes. they started off uh from I think it was Brooklyn they were known as the Bodega Boys 
And they basically yeah. did a podcast mm-hmm. and they did some skits, like some mm-hmm. street stuff where they talked to people like MOS, man on the street type stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they just got really, really popular. And then they ended up doing something uh, on Vice. And then Vice, it ran its course at Vice. And then they ended up getting picked up by Showtime. Well, good for them. So they were calling the fight yesterday. And people say this was the best part of the fight because both of them told Jake Paul to shut the hell up. Mm-hmm. Three rounds and two. <laughs> Logan's up. Logan's up. Logan's beating Floyd Mayweather. Let that sink in. Be quiet. No, it's not. Be it's quiet. Not. That's You're not wrong. what we say. You're wrong. Got your hat. <laughs> okay. Can I run out? Got your hat. What do you say? Anyways. Got your hat. Got, Got your hat. hat. Yeah, they, they were good. They were funny. I just wish. Uh, I don't know. Like there was, there wasn't there for me. Like I couldn't really hear him too well. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to hear him better, but whatever. So Showtime treated this as they should have, as a spectacle, as a mm-hmm. as entertainment. They did not get any real aficionados involved. They in did this. for the two real fights. They, they right. They wanted to for make the two this... real fights. They brought out Al Bernstein. Oh my and god, Abner Morris. Oh my god, they rolled out Al Bernstein. Oh they, right, yeah. So because Morrow calls, like I said, Morrow calls other fights. Yeah. So he did all four of them, but they only had they had one guy on the desk. They didn't even bring in anybody else. <laughs> they had one guy on the desk. He also had to do the post fight interview. So they brought in like a bare bare bones crew, a graveyard. and then they brought in they brought in Al Bernstein and Abner Morris for two fights, kicked those dudes out, and brought in Dizzo Amaro for the two exhibitions. Oh, that's very funny. I gotta see these Dizzo Amaro guys. Dizzo, Jesus, D with a like D, like Jesus but with a D. Got it. Got They're it. funny. You'll like them. They do. They've done really big interviews. Well, I can just tell everybody this. I know that many people will ridicule. Floyd Mayweather, they'll ask the question on ESPN today. Did he tarnish his career? And I'm, I'm, I like the showbiz of it all. And I, and I'm with Floyd. I like the money of it all, you know? And you know what? Boxing fans, guess what? Boxing's still alive. It didn't die last night. It's not going to die because Floyd Mayweather fought a Paul brother. It's not going to die when the other Paul brother fights another UFC fighter. You still got Teofimo Lopez in two weeks. You still got Shakur Stevenson fighting on Saturday. So it's it's two totally different things. I don't understand why these boxing like diehards are like that. Mm-hmm. If you love boxing, just don't watch it. That's all. I love boxing and I loved it. Me too. Yeah. Hey, listen, let me have a minute here to uh, mention Corky's Pest Control. Everybody knows the number 1-800-901-1102 for Corky. Um, if you are in L.A., Riverside or San Diego, Cork can come and take care of business. So if it's rats or, or mice, you don't want that. Listen, I was in like this mice denial where I could see my, mouse droppings, mice droppings in my garage. And I was like, eh, it's not such a thing, you know? And my kids were like, dad, I saw a mouse in the garage. I'm like, man, no, you didn't. I was in complete mouse denial. And I had Corky come out and I showed them what was going on. They're like, oh yeah, that's evidence right there. And then they set the traps. And then they did all the work at my house to make sure that the mice couldn't get in. So I was like, well, who's going to fix this? And they're like, we are. I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize that. I thought you guys just sprayed outside. So ants don't come in. They're like, no, we fix this stuff. This is how, this is how we, we fight these guys um, is we make your house that much harder to get into. So if it's mice or rats or spiders or ants or termites or whatever else, Corky can help. You know the number. Call them. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky. Nice, Browner. Very nice. I'm going to stop doing it. Browner's going to do it on his own now. I know. I know. You got to put the him up on the screen, too. Yeah, you put him up. Let, let people see him, too, when he's Malute, working like that. Malute Vandross. 1-800-901-1102. Corky. <sighs> Look at him go. He's good. That's very yeah. that, that boy got talent. I'm like he, John Legend. That boy good. No, you John you more like Legend. section. You more like section with chocolate. Section chocolate. Yeah. They're from the yeah. original coming to America, not the second one. Yeah, let's hear it from my band section with chocolate. Section with second, chocolate. Second wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad, but no, I haven't they, seen it again they, though. Like, they brought out Wesley Snipes. I mean, come on, what more do you want? Like, <laughs> you know, Wesley kind of stole that movie low key. Yeah, dude, for real. Dude, coming to America one, I've probably seen hundred times. Yeah. And coming to America too, I've seen once. Oh, you coming to, to America, the first one is always on Comedy Central, and if I see it, I'm like, okay, I'll stop here. You can get yeah. me to a commercial. I will watch yeah. it into yeah, a yeah. commercial. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's how good the movie is. You right. get a laugh before a commercial comes up. Hey, there are certain movies that that if if they are on TV, like I'll give you one that I will always stop for. Stripes. If I, for some reason, am I flipping around a television and I see the movie Stripes, I will stop and I will get to a commercial and I might stick around. 
Yeah, Forrest Gump's that for me. There's a solid chance that I will see Forrest Gump if, and that kid at the end of that movie. If Tombstone is on, I'll watch it. To at least Tombstone. Go, yeah. Love wow, Tombstone. It's like one of my that. favorite wow. movies, dude. Yeah. Shout out oh, to Bill Dumb Paxton. and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber seems to always be on TBS. I will stop for that movie anytime. How about like um uh Anchorman? See, like nah, Anchorman. Nah. No? Anchorman yeah. two. Anchorman two almost ruined Anchorman one for me. Like, oh, that's wow. how bad Anchorman 2 was. It's like the worst sequel of all time. I also watch almost every Mission Impossible to a commercial break, and then I'm out. So there's a couple <laughs> movies that can get me into a commercial break. Tom Cruise but... is the only guy that can get me to a theater, like, on a consistent basis. I will go watch Tom Cruise try and kill himself in movies every time he releases a Tom movie. Cruise, get better. He's in quarantine right now. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, when is... Scientologists when is, uh... are anti-vaxxers? Clearly. That's why he was yelling at people on the set. Damn. When is um when is uh what's it called um Mission Impossible? No, no, no. Uh, Maverick. Uh, Top Gun. When is Top, Top Gun, Gun 2, two coming out? Yeah, I don't know. They filmed it already here in San Diego. I don't know when it's going to come out though. Come on, you got to put out that Mission Impossible for anybody. Wants oh, to know initial Gun. release? No, that's in Israel. What the heck? Top Gun Israel. two. Mm-hmm. Dude, Fast Nine's you, already out in China. Place. Hmm. All right. All right. Hey, listen, I was um, we, we were going from this this Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight and we were going to get November back 19th. Into, oh, thank you. Then we were going to get back into some other stuff, uh, including, hey, Kawhi and the Clippers advance. We'll get there. Stick around. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. It's time to eat like you won't always be wearing elastic waistbands with Pollo Fit Bowls, made with organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. Live soccer is back. Watch Orange County Soccer Club, OC's highest level of professional soccer, live on your view. Watch Orange County SC take on the San Diego Loyal SC, Wednesday, June 9th at 7. Watch world-class players and future stars. Transform your summer with the new family game night and outdoor fun all season long. Live soccer is back. Orange County versus the San Diego Loyal, Wednesday at 7 on your view. I've been a part of this community for a long time, and giving back is what we do. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about the San Diego Giving Back Raffle, a benefit for Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. Grand prize is this $4 million luxury home, or you could win a car, vacation, or cash. Everyone is guaranteed to win a prize. And you'll feel good knowing your raffle purchase goes to help families like the Lechugas. The next early bird deadline is June 18th. Adios, love handles. Adios, couch. Adios, quarantine 15. Say adios to the quarantine bod with Pollo Fit Bowls, made with fire grilled chicken and organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. UC Santa Barbara baseball's 2021 season came to an end on Sunday after the Gauchos lost in the Tucson Regional to number five Arizona, five to two. UCSB got a dominating 14-4 win in the opening game of the regional against number 23 Oklahoma State. But in game two on the weekend on Saturday, they were shut out by the Wildcats 4 to nothing. Matching back up with Oklahoma State in an elimination game on Sunday, the Gauchos again put up big numbers, taking down the Cowboys 13-3. While they threatened in several innings on Sunday evening against Arizona, including getting runners on with a tying run at the plate in the ninth inning, the Wildcats defense was able to hold off the Gauchos and get the win. UCSB finishes the year with the sixth most wins in program history, a 41-20 overall record. 
I'm Haley Stasiak. That's your sports in a minute. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. And they're on. Welcome back. Please join us in welcoming the Race and Sports Radio Show back home to 1090. Join host Felix Taverna every Saturday at 9 a.m. for the very best horse racing coverage in all of Southern California. The all new and mightier 1090. The Olympic Games, where the world's best athletes will compete on the most prestigious stage. Catch all the action leading up to the Olympic Games on Guide to the Games every Tuesday on Your View. The series examines the qualification process, the history of the games, and the teams and athletes that are expected to shine, plus information about the rules, events, and competitors. Don't miss Guide to the Games, Tuesdays on Your View. Love Promise Moments are part of the mission of what we do here at Subaru El Cajon. A Love Promise Moment is when we as human beings deliver an experience beyond exceptional to any one of our guests, and then that guest's life is positively affected by that interaction. It's amazing to watch what happens when two human beings talk on that level and create something magical. And sometimes they drive away with a car, sometimes they don't, but we've had an impact on that person's life and that's the magic. You know, our employees react to things like Make-A-Wish, Feeding San Diego, and the other groups we help by jumping in. This year, through COVID, we were able to help a little girl out and got her a rather large scooter that she needed for mobility. We gave up our Christmas party as employees, and we actually adopted a wish of a young girl here in El Cajon, and we gave her a three-wheel scooter so she didn't have to use her wheelchair all the time. It gives me goosebumps even thinking about it. Let's take it up a notch with Kaplan and Crew tonight's premium boost, powered by the mightier 1090. We are in the hope business. What we do every day and what we've done for 40 years is to provide kids and families going through critical illnesses hope that tomorrow's gonna be a better day. My favorite wish is the next one because that is the power of our organization is to bring hope to kids who are going through something right now and hope can't wait so people can get involved now by donating resources they can donate in kind they can donate their time as volunteers they can donate dollars because kids are still getting diagnosed with illnesses that qualify for make wish every day so people can visit us online at sandiego.wish.org they can visit us and follow us on social media. There are so many ways to get connected and people can help in many, many different ways. We need your support now more than ever because illness doesn't take a vacation and it doesn't take a break because of COVID-19. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization, it's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. Kaplan and Crew tonight's premium boost is powered by the Mightier 1090. Kaplan and Crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and the surrounding areas. Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive, uh, another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently, 
currently about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog. Still finding a loving placement and purpose in life. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific. Every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk.